Hi, my name is Jane Chen. I'm president of Medical Science Liaison Institute. Welcome to this web episode. The MSL job is field-based, and with all field-based positions, there are very real limitations, at least physical limitations, to the kind of career development pathways you can have. Career development and job satisfaction are definitely related. There are overlaps. A lot of people who are hired in medical affairs are hired into these positions because we are self-starters. We are very highly motivated. We tend to be entrepreneurial. We don't need to have people telling us what we have to do every second of the day. And that is how we are successful at managing a field-based franchise. That being said, perhaps dissatisfaction is built into our psyche. We do well because we expect so much of ourselves. We are rarely ever satisfied. And that can help when it comes to constant self-improvement. We're always looking for ways that we can excel and ways we can improve our performance, ways we can acquire more knowledge, acquire more skills. But that could also lead us to feel dissatisfied most of the time. So what I'd like to do is share some of the discussion points that can be helpful for you to examine ways to look at your own career satisfaction. First of all, I want to ask, how do you describe yourself? Do you describe yourself as a series of nouns, such as job titles, such as labels? For example, I am a medical science liaison. I'm a VP. Or perhaps you describe yourself as a label. I'm a scientist. I'm a pharmacist. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a business person. Um, some of us have degrees in all of those, those of us who are overachievers with multiple degrees after our names. Now, these are useful for quick intros, but these are terrible for self-examination of your career development. You box yourself in. You basically narrow yourself to this label, to this noun. It's very difficult to then broaden your perspective. You want to broaden your perspective, not narrow it further. Instead of using nouns, use verbs and adjectives instead. Think about what you do well. What is it that you do perhaps better than your peers? Or what is it that you naturally have an affinity for? Or you naturally have a gift for? Maybe you are somebody who solve problems before they start. Are you someone who draw out the best in other people's performance? Are you a natural at communicating very complex ideas into relatable terms, no matter what the audience? And the benefit of using verbs and adjectives instead of nouns is that you can widen your perspective instead of describing yourself in very narrow terms like job titles. You can then look at your skills, look at the different jobs or even different careers that can also employ and capitalize and value those type of skills, those type of verbs. Do you value knowledge sharing and acquisition? Some of us may value our thought leadership or our reputation, what's also called our name brand or our personal brand. I want to mention an MSL Institute resource that I had published some time back, but I think is very relevant today. The title of the article is called MSL Job Satisfaction, Five Questions to Ask. I touch upon some of the topics that I had discussed here and particularly about how to frame your thinking about job satisfaction in a different way beyond what can I do next as an MSL? How else can I get promoted if there are no management jobs? I think in the long run, what help us stay satisfied in any career and especially in a field-based career are really about relationships and values and the type of tasks that you engage in on a daily basis. In my article, The Five Questions to Ask, those five questions touch upon your relationship with your supervisor, how satisfied you are with the current company climate, how fulfilled do you feel about the key tasks of your job, the kind of actions that you do on a daily basis, how satisfied are you with the way you're growing? And when I say growing, it doesn't always mean promotional growing, but growth as a person, growth as a medical affairs professional. Sometimes growth doesn't necessarily mean a title change. Finally, what about that balance not just the typical work-life balance that we always talk about, a way of thinking about your identity, your work identity and your personal identity. How balanced are those? Do you tend to invest more of your time on your work identity? Do you also invest and pay attention as much to your personal identity what you do outside of your job as you do within your job. I encourage you to read that article. And as always, I look forward to hearing from you, your feedback, your input about what you have heard in this episode and also what you have read in this article. If you have ideas for a future webisode, please feel free to send me an email. Until next time, bye.